So you've done all the hard work and research and figured out that it's the Kia Cerato you want as your new hatchback. Well, that was the easy bit. Now you've got to figure out which one you want to buy. Well, this is where the Car Advice range review comes in handy. We've got the entire Cerato hatch range here, so you can figure out which one you need to spend your money on. The all-new Serato hatch range kicks off from $20,990 plus on-road costs with the Serato S, which comes with a six-speed manual transmission. For that, you'll get Autonomous Emergency Braking, or AEB, and that's the technology that stops the car if you don't, plus lane-keeping assistant, rear-view camera, 16-inch wheels, cruise control, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. An automatic transmission can be added for an additional $2,800. Another $4,800 on top of the S lands you in the Sport at 25,790, which includes a six-speed automatic transmission as standard and adds 17-inch alloy wheels, integrated satellite navigation with live traffic, a leather-look steering wheel and gear shifter. Despite the inclusion of six airbags, Serato S and Sport models only score a four-star ANCAP rating and that's due to the AEB system not including what they call vulnerable road users, which includes pedestrians and cyclists. But critically, they still score the same structural rating as the five-star models and can be optioned with advanced AEB for just $1,000. Moving up the range, the Sport Plus is priced from $28,340 and comes loaded with features and tech, including AEB with pedestrian and cyclist detection, adaptive cruise control, LED daytime running lights, keyless entry and start, leather seats, electric folding mirrors, automatic climate control and rear air vents. Finally, those after the warm hatch option will flock towards the GT, which kicks off from 32,990. It comes standard with a seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox, plus a perforated flat-bottomed steering wheel, multi-link rear suspension, red pin striping along the interior, GT insignia on the seats, 18-inch alloy wheels, dual tail pipes, and adjustable driving modes. But with all this pricing, it's worth keeping in mind that Kia often runs drive-away deals, and at the time of publishing, the range actually kicks off from 19,990 drive-away, with the top specification GT priced at just 31,990 drive-away. Kia's really stepped up the game here in terms of interior quality and fit and finish. That last Serato was a little bit scratchy on the inside. This is definitely an improvement. So you've got soft touch surfaces, but there are a few scratchy surfaces around the place, but it isn't too bad. Central to the cabin is this. It is an eight inch infotainment system and it is fantastic. It's so easy to use. It's color touchscreen, so you can transition through the screens on the move. And from sport and above, you also get inbuilt satellite navigation. The only real downside to this whole infotainment package though, is this voice recognition feature, which only works when you have smartphone mirroring activated, as opposed to other cars where you can activate it at any time. Leg and headroom in the second row is great, with the Sport Plus and GT models also scoring rear air vents. The seats fold in a 60-40 split folding manner, while there's an armrest with cup holders dividing the two outer seats. Storage is also excellent with 428 litres of cargo capacity on offer, with a space saver spare tyre fitted beneath the cargo floor. The Serato range comes with the option of two engines, but most of the cars you see on the road are gonna be fitted with this one here. It's the entry level two liter, four cylinder, naturally aspirated petrol engine. It's just the top spec GT that comes with the turbocharged motor. That means this one produces 112 kilowatts of power and 192 newton meters of torque. It's actually a really good engine. It's mated to a six speed automatic gearbox. You can also get a six speed manual too. It's quite a responsive engine and you come with all these drive modes as well. So you can switch between comfort, eco, dynamic, and then sport. When you pop it into sport, the steering gets a little bit firmer. The gearbox becomes a little bit more responsive and the engine just becomes a whole lot more playful. The only downside to this engine is that you know, if you do get stuck into it to overtake or something like that, it can get a little bit noisy in the cabin. One of the things that amazes me here with the Serato range is the self-steering function. Now, it's not technically self-steering in the sense that you don't need to steer at all. It's an assistive function. So when it detects lines on the road, you get a little symbol there with a green steering wheel and then it just sticks to the lines for you. All you have to do is just assist the steering as it goes, which is really cool technology. 
Kia was one of the first companies in Australia to employ their own ride and handling team, which means that they take cars that come in from Korea and then do a bespoke tune in Australia for our roads and catered for our conditions. And it absolutely shows because you hit some potholes, you get out onto the country roads where it becomes a little unsettled, and this car really adapts beautifully. And it's a big change from the Korean ride and handling tune, which is far softer in comparison. So that is one of the big benefits when you do buy a Serato. It is tuned for Australian conditions. A downside to driving a hatch is often visibility. And with the hatch lid, it creates a bit of a black hole out the back window. Here in the Serato, it's actually not too bad. The wing mirrors are decent size. You can easily see out of them. You've got your blind spot monitor attached to the side there as well. And visibility out the rear is really good. And that's on top of a pretty decent reverse view camera as well, plus front and rear parking sensors. So this car is going to be super easy to park if you do find yourself in and around the city. step up to the Serato GT and this is where the range really comes alive. Instead of a basic torsion beam suspension setup, this is a more complex multi-link rear suspension and that means a more compliant ride and much better cornering. Best part about this car is actually the engine though. It is a weapon of a thing, 1.6 litre turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine. It's made it to a seven-speed dual clutch automatic gearbox and it pushes out 150 kilowatts of power and 265 newton meters of torque. Now it may not sound like a groundbreaking amount, but because the car weighs barely anything, and you can get stuck into it and it really pins you back in the seat nicely. It does come at a slight fuel premium though. It uses 8.2 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers, which is slightly more than the 7.2 liters per 100 you'll find in the entry level naturally aspirated engine. The cabin feels really premium in here as well. I love this flat bottom steering wheel with a GT badge. You get GT insignia on the seats and they hug you in nicely. So when you do finally find yourself a set of corners, you can get settled in and go throw the car around a bit. The thing I'm really liking the most here though is the noise. So I've got it in sport mode here. Give it a little punch and you get a lot of induction noise in the cabin. You get a bit of rasp out of the exhaust. It kind of makes you feel like it's a bit of a hardy car. It feels a bit hot hatch-like in that sense. If a sporty hatch is on your shortlist, the GT has your name all over it. It's gonna keep you smiling on a windy mountain road, but our pick of the entire Serato hatch range is this one here. It's called the Sport. It blends features, practicality, safety, and enough performance to keep everything going. And it also comes with Kia's renowned seven year warranty. Let us know in the comments below whether you agree or disagree. And in the interim, head to caradvice.com to see more about the Kia Serato hatch range.